13 minutes in front of 10. Thanks for being with us on Live at 9. Now, this is a truly unique experience that blends the culinary arts with actual art, and it's entirely virtual. Now, earlier in the show, we talked with the man behind this 100% virtual dining experience. And by virtual, I mean there's no actual food. It's like blockchain for food, and it is a growing trend nationally. 18-year-old chef Logan Gulliff, you've met him before on Live at 9. He is the winner of MasterChef Junior. When did you win, Logan? I went back in uh, 2014, so quite a while ago. Seems so long. I think, the f I think you were like 12 the first time you did a recipe for us. You, we wanted you to show some of your skills, uh, not just in a virtual experience, but in terms of like real food. So what have you got for us today? All right, so uh, since yesterday was Easter, I have a really nice leftover Easter quiche. So you might have some leftover ham. Um, you know, maybe some uh, asparagus, maybe some broccoli. You know, you never know what you have left over. So we're going to get started. We're going to take our ham here. We're going to take it. We're going to try to get a nice little cube dice here. Um, you can just kind of do whatever because this is just going to be a quiche. How much do you want and, in terms uh, of quantity on the ham, ideally? Uh, on the ham, you could go for a quarter of a cup. Um, it just kind of depends on how much ham you have left over and how much ham you want in your quiche. Okay. That's another thing because, you know, the quiche is just such an easy, um, uh, you know, just easy to make, easy to enjoy. You know, you just have your pre-made pie crust here and uh, you take your ham and, and it's you just light. add it right in and then... Yeah, so it makes a good dinner after we've stuffed ourselves with all the uh, candy and the desserts and everything that goes with Easter dinner. Yeah, and it really makes a great um, breakfast. That's what I love to have it for. I love to have it for breakfast. So I've got to ask you about the asparagus. I have a challenge buying asparagus that is tender. And you've got some stalks there that look pretty big. I thought that we were supposed to buy like just the little tiny skinny ones. How, how, what do I look for? Um, when you're looking for buying asparagus, you just kind of want whatever. Um, you know, you want them to be uh, kind of stiff because you want them to be able to snap. One of the things with the asparagus is you want to take it and you want to try to bend it and then it'll kind of tell you, well, it should, <laughs> and there, there it snaps. Oh. And that's one of the things about asparagus is that then you can take this piece, get rid of it, and then that shows you kind of your size of asparagus and what you're looking for. So if it doesn't snap, that's where I'm getting the tough uh, stalk. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's kind of one of your issues is your asparagus is a little bit too old, it's a little bit too tough, and it's not got that crisp crunch. Gotcha. Okay, awesome. And uh, love, that's kind of one of the issues. I love asparagus, but goodness. So you also mentioned we could do right. broccoli. You wouldn't do both broccoli and asparagus, right? You're just using whichever vegetable you no, have left over? No, no. Okay. No. Okay. I, I wouldn't do one. I'd stick to, you know, one vegetable, one meat per quiche. So you could do, you know, um, a broccoli bacon quiche. I have the ham and a, um, asparagus. Okay, cool. All right, what do I do next? All right, so next we're going to add in our cheese. Um, I love this cheese here. Now, you're going to want a lot of cheese because, you know, the more cheese you have in a quiche, the better. That's about a cup or a cup and a half. And what particular uh, kind? And then just... Um, I, that cheese is the uh, Trader Joe's Swiss Gruyere mix. I really like it. It's super delicious. It's mom's favorite. <laughs> well, you want to keep mom happy. Oh, that's for sure. <laughs> so next, we got to actually make our kind of egg uh, mixture here. So we're going to take our uh, cream, or kind of like uh, half and half, basically, kind of a mix, and then pour it in. Looks like two cups. Um, it was just a, a little bit over a cup, okay. I think. Okay. Um, so now we're going to take our eggs here, crack them, boom, one. This looks fairly easy, and I could make it really easy Two. by using a prepared pie crust, right? Yes, yes. And so then you're going to want to kind of give it a little mix. You're going to want to try to break down those yolks and uh, give it a really nice... Um, look to it. Okay. 
It does need some more eggs though. We're about out of time. And you're going to so want to you... make it to, it looks kind of like a nice custard. Oh, okay. So you, after you do that, you pour it in. What do you cook it for uh, and, and on what temperature? Uh, you cook it for about 50 minutes at 350 in the oven. Yum. All right. Well, and Alex, then you get something really beautiful and delicious. Alex and I will be over shortly for lunch. Oh, look at that. You put mm, the full stalks mm, too. That mm. looks very good. Thank you, Logan. And we will again uh, put your website up so that folks can get the virtual dining experience, which is truly one of a kind.